I think we'll start this out with an example. You know, the Hilbert chain is you're going to have a path. Oh, 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 oh. You grab by the function. Oh, yeah, right. we might be wrong. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> We're funny, but not always a In a previous shot, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I got covered in ants, um, but uh, seems to be a reinforcing stimulus uh, because my behavior is increasing of going back to the rocks that produce the ants in the first place, which is a wonderful segue into the concept of automaticity of reinforcement. I think one of the things that people screw up all the time about operant conditioning, even classical for that matter, is the automatic nature of it. This stuff happens inside your brain at a level that's like whoop, way down here. My point is, is that you don't have to think about something to be a reinforcer for it to be in reinforcing. You don't have to want the reinforcer, other than some motivating operation stuff, which you can look up in different videos, but it's, it's independent of your desire, right? It's independent of your knowledge of being reinforced. Your behavior is reinforced, whether or not you like it. You can simply say, I am not going to let that stimulus reinforce me anymore. <laughs> Ha 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 ha, says the stimulus, because it will do it anyway. Why? Because it's a reinforcing stimulus, right? So again, if the stimulus increases the probability of a behavior, it's that simple. It increases the probability of a behavior. There is nothing more to it. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to want it. You don't have to desire it. You don't have to, you don't have to agree to it. You could be angry at the fact, I don't like the fact that smoking reinforces smoking, um, which sounds weird, but you get the idea, right? I don't like the fact that I get reinforced for picking my nose by the fact that the, the release of the boogers, yeah, it's just reinforcing. Um, <clears throat> the knowledge of it's irrelevant. It just happens. It's automatic. So the automaticity of reinforcement is something important to understand because if your behavior is happening, it's probably being reinforced. So you better start looking for it for the reinforcer, right? To understand what's keeping your behavior going. Which leads me to another thing, right? That the behavior that is reinforced is completely flipping arbitrary. You're sitting here watching me sit on a rock. I mean, squat or whatever you call this particular pose, on a rock. And that seems to reinforce my behavior. There's no logical connection between you on YouTube and me on a rock. It's got nothing to do with nothing, right? So the reinforcers that are available are, so if you have a stimulus that's reinforcing, it just reinforces and it will reinforce any behavior that happened immediately prior to that particular stimulus being delivered, right? Or removed, you get the idea. So I'm, I always talk in examples of positive reinforcement. But so <laughs> my point being that when you engage in a behavior, period, it doesn't matter what that behavior is. If you follow that behavior, or if that behavior is followed with a particular reinforcing stimulus, it doesn't, they don't have to match up. They don't have to be, wow, I was reading a book, so I get, you know, I felt great about myself and the knowledge that I've gained. That has nothing to do with it. It might just be that you were relaxed, or it might just be that you were by yourself, or it might just be that you turn to page, who knows what the reinforcer is for reading a book, but it doesn't have to be logically connected to it. It just happens, um, which goes back to that automaticity of reinforcement piece, right? So we as organisms tend to overthink how we interact with our environment, in my particular opinion, and we add things that aren't necessarily there. We can simplify it by remembering that reinforcement is automatic. You don't have to choose it. You don't have to decide to be reinforced for behavior and that it goes with any behavior. It's the temporal relation between the behavior and the reinforcing stimulus that's important. That's what does the, re the reinforcing. And if you look at the other videos, you'll learn about, um, about immediacy of reinforcement is drastically important. That's about that temporal relation, right? So at that point, we understand that anything can reinforce basically anything. So in order to understand what a reinforcer is, you're going to have to do some observations in your environment. You're going to have to do an FBA and you're going to have to start playing around and just kind of figure it out. But folks, this is cool stuff and it happens independent of the frontal lobe. Understanding it is awesome, but that doesn't, it, that doesn't change whether or not it's going to happen. You don't have to understand reinforcement for yourself to be reinforced. In today's world, in 2017, you'll often 
look back on this time and be like, oh my gosh, that was a crazy time politically or whatever. But one of the things that's a phrase that you hear now is that you don't have to believe in science for it to be true. Same thing with reinforcement. You don't have to believe in reinforcement for, for reinforcers to reinforce you. They just do. And they don't reinforce you specifically. They reinforce your behavior. It's all I got on automaticity and arbitrary nature of stimuli or behaviors that arbitrary stimuli reinforce. They're not arbitrary. But you get my point. Arbitrary behaviors, automaticity of reinforcement. That's what we got. I'm going to figure out a way off of this rock that doesn't involve lots of ants. Thank you. See you. Oh, bye. Oh, barbed wire.